in the hunt for Haddock, two trawlers risk collision on treacherous seas. While skipper Sandy Watts struggles to catch enough fish to be his long-suffering crew. Trawlers Starlight and Starlight Rays are heading north from Peterhead towards the Shetlands. By doubling up and stretching their nets between them, pair trawlers like these can save on fuel and catch more fish. But with 12 men to pay, they need to catch a lot. What they're looking for is high-value fish, like haddock and whiting. All they've caught is coli, a low-value fish. It's a worry for the skipper of Starlight Rays, James Force. I suppose I am disappointed in when I'm good at war. But I can't let it get to me yet, because this is part and parcel of the job. Then we've got to keep searching. It's a big sea, but it's not all fish. If the pair trawlers continue to catch coal, the skippers and their crews are in trouble. south is the fruitful harvest, a rarity in the Peterhead fleet, a wooden fishing boat. It's more than 30 years old. Skipper Sandy Watt has been a fisherman since he was 16. He follows in the footsteps of his father and grandfather. This is not your boat! Not you! Oh, it's so Sandy has managed to find Haddock. The problem is that at this time of the year, there isn't much, and it's very small. Get someone in it! He's struggling to scratch a living from the boat he's owned for nearly 20 years. Probably been attached to this, this vessel so long now. Oh my goodness, I came aboard here in 1989. There's just an attachment and it's, it's, this is just your second home. In fact, you spend more time here than you do in your house. There's a relaxed mood on board the fruitful harvest. The fishing may not be good, but this morning, the crew have other things on their mind. We have eggs, beans, bologna, and we have cheese sandwich and smoked sausage. We actually think you would eat all that with that, with a stomach that size. You eat too much of this, eh? Bacon, bologna, and sausages, huh? Everything for I No good. No, I'll have a cup of luck for you, that'll do me. As you can see, I'm watching my figure. <laughs> I absolutely love the job, but I probably should have replaced the vessel um, a few years ago. Well, probably ten years ago, but without having a son coming behind me, I just felt maybe the times this actually will have taken us now, so we'll just have to stick with what we've got further till we're, uh, we're hung up our boots. Working together, the pair trawlers take it in turns to shoot their nets. James 
Skipper of Starlight Rays goes first. His opposite number on the Starlight is Alec Baird. He set a problem. We've got fast on the eye. The, the net stopped. Obviously in, a, in an obstacle in the boat that we're stuck in. The net's being towed by both boats. But it's the section nearest Alec that's caught fast. It's down to him to fix it. The skippers find the spot directly above where the gear is snagged on the sea bottom. Alec has to wind and rewind the winch to try and free the nets down below. On fruitful harvest they've got the same problem. Their nets are stuck on the seabed for the second time today. Sandy Watt and his crewman, John Duncan Campbell, are struggling with their winch, too. Could you still turn a wee bit in there, just stop off side? Well, this is the second time we've come fast to the seabed, so... Yeah. So we're not the best place just now, to say the very least. And we'll have to move out of this area. This is... This is just absolutely hopeless. Still turn a wee bit in there, John, will you? I'm just quite annoyed with myself. This is just one of the better areas and you think, well, if we go down here, we'll maybe get the same type of holes we got in the morning. I can't believe I've done it, but well, well, I'm not going to do it again. <laughs> On the pair trawlers, the nets have finally been sprung from the seabed. That seems to have trumpet, so we're going to get the net by the hole and make sure that the, the net's not gone. When I started to see, he was surrounded by guys. He was surrounded by Johns. But he seems to be uh, an old head of young shoulders. And he comes from a fishing background and he's, he's getting loads of help along the way. So, it's, um, he'll have no problem making a grade whatsoever. He takes a lot of time to tell me, tell me things. He's, uh, he, 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 he's wanting me to learn up again. He just, he just took a lot of time to tell me, he explains, he explains to me what's happening and, and he tries to learn how his best he can. After two days at sea, the pair trawlers still haven't made enough money to pay the crew, let alone make a profit. Instead of catching Cody, they need to track down the elusive haddock and whiting. What I see there, 
the right quality of heart. But it's not much good. Not much good. Someone else pleased with the catch is the first mate, James's son, Scott. Nice, I like in there, boy, then. No, no, eh, no quality, so. Better for the crew. For screws for all. I don't think you can actually beat a good fish. Good Scottish Scotch fish. And this is for the crew. We're all great fish lovers here. Cooking. It's a good pastime. It uh, makes my, takes my mind off of the pressures up here. Finding fish, the right fish, is the skipper's job. But his decisions affect the mood of all the crew. The wheelhouse can be a lonely place. Sometimes I would far rather be down there than here. I mean, I, I, I'm not taking that away from a crew because I think they're marvellous. Behind every good skipper is a good crew. And it doesn't matter how good you think you are up here. If you haven't got a good crew to do things, you're, you're useless. It's 6.30 in the morning. Time for fruitful harvests for the fall. Sandy's anxious for a good start to the day. They'll catch nothing until the crew can bring the tail boy back on board. One end of the net is attached to the tail boy. If they fail to retrieve it, the net will stay on the sea bottom. Hooking the boy demands precise coordination between John in the stern and Sandy in the wheelhouse. John has just one chance to throw the hook each time that Sandy passes the boy. Trawlers, the lucky streak has run out, and they can't find enough haddock. It's Cody that's been filling the nets again. With every haul, the skippers are hoping against hope their luck will change. Well, it's all in these nets. Don't see no sign of the Cody yet. Just waiting to see if uh, there's any fish to shoot properly. 
The last thing the crew need is more cooling. What they want is Hannah Cooling. Alec casts an anxious eye over the hall. Is that funny? Looks like Coley. There's so much Coley this time that Alec's crew can't even handle it all. He has to send some over to the sister ship, Starlight Raids. markets for a quarter of the price of Haddock. Worse still, the legal quotas don't allow them to catch much of it. For James, the economics don't make sense. He feels there's no alternative but to dump much of the fish back into the sea. Dead. Fruitful harvest, there are signs that things are about to get worse. There's just an unbelievable swell, and it is very, very, very uncomfortable. I mean, this is, oh, well, as you can see, you have to hold on. You can't, you can't let go with one hand without catching hold with the other. And it's just absolutely more. This is what I like to call a hands and knee job. Because most of the day, you're crawling about in your hands and knees. <laughs> oh. Oh. That just makes you wonder at times why we do this. Eh? Just in that anticipation that we might get some good fish from the hole. The amount of swell that you've got today, if you get if you get a pile of wind the back of that tomorrow, it will be un unbelievably rough. I mean, you think this is bad. <laughs> a big swell usually means stormy weather to follow. Sandy will either have to brave the coming storms or take the boat back home half full. Oh, that's just there. That's that's no use. It's, uh... Just a typical hole for this time of year, man. Maybe we get two or three boxes. I feel that we might be inside. I hope, I'm hoping it stays inside. But their crews are still working. They'll be lucky to get three hours sleep tonight. James will shoot his net and he'll go to bed and I'll stay up and vice versa with our net. James is up as always one of the skippers up at, at any one given time. Eh? It's 
starlight rays shoot her legs. James is taking a risk. He's going back to the spot where he snagged his nets before. It's the sort of rough seabed that the best quality had a glove. If his nets hold out, this could be a big payday for the crew. By four in the morning, they'll know if James made the right decision. And I really think we'll have to head into Peterhead tonight because uh, and that fork is just a bit much for us. We'll just hold this swing board and uh, make for home. Oh, failed again. Right on, boys. Sorry, I'm sorry about that. I'm plenty of death. There's always next week. <laughs> that's, that's probably the worst job in the world. I, if you didn't like doing it, you, you just couldn't do it. Like, it would just be. You wouldn't get a worse job like if you didn't like doing it. Four hours after shooting the nets, the crew of the Starlight Rays are about to haul in. to find out if his gamble of fishing over the same grounds has paid off. Very surprised at that. 
drive. Oh. Oops, oh, oh, wait a sec. Four. Ten. Oh, oh, I got it. approaching. Sandy has put the safety of his crew first and decided to return to port. They've been at sea just three days. All right, there, Jun. Jun, steer away for all right, there. The weather can blow as much as it likes now. We're not really caring. You think it's impossible for it to be a, a rubbish day tomorrow? It's the harbour's just like glass. <laughs> you'll go home tonight and you'll be saying to yourself, Well, have I made a blunder? Well, have I made a this or this all going all night? But if you get up tomorrow morning and it's a gale of wind, you're absolutely chuffed. <laughs> Safe and put ahead, Sandy's landing 80 boxes of fish, just half his target for the trip. It's not over for James and his crew on Starlight Ways. With their own net destroyed, their only option is to take another from Starlight. Stern to stern, and just meters from each other in heavy seas. It's a delicate operation for the skippers. later they landed a record catch at Peterhead. For skippers and crew, the trip was finally a success. Next time on Trollerman, the largest boat in the Scottish fleet sets out on her maiden voyage, and skipper James Buchan takes the renown to fish in a place called the Graveyard.